Our motoring tip of the week concerns oil life monitors. Now, oil life monitors have been on GM and Honda vehicles for a lot of model years, and I find it to be really useful information. You know, you'll, you'll get opinions both ways on this positive and negative, but I think it's a really good thing. Uh, it's not the be all and end all of your maintenance program, but it's really valuable information. So our viewer is asking, he says he's got a 16 year old caddy, uh, Cadillac, it has a computer of course, and when I scan the information about the car, one of the things I noticed is remaining oil, uh, remaining life of the engine oil. How on earth does the computer measure the remaining life of the oil? So if you think about all our vehicles since the mid 80s with electronic engine controls and fuel injection, we have all kinds of sensors on the engine that are input devices to the computer. It needs to know coolant temperature, engine RPM, throttle position, crankshaft position, ambient temperature, manifold vacuum. There's tons and tons of input to that computer that runs the engine, and then it maps out and decides how much fuel to inject, when to inject it, spark timing it, and how to run the engine efficiently. But all that information is very good for other things as well. For example, we can use all that information uh, is valuable in calculating what remaining life might be left in the oil. The two main parameters manufacturers typically use for oil monitoring systems is total number of engine revolutions, not the RPM at any given moment, but cumulative engine RPM since the last reset. So basically that's gonna give you engine hours, runtime. And that's important because if you're driving the highway, you're logging lots of kilometers quickly, but if it's a police car, uh, ambulance, fire truck, taxi, whatever. There could be an awful lot of idling time without putting a single kilometer on, and we need to factor that into the oil life as well. So it counts total engine revolutions since the last reset, and also operating temperature of the engine. And we know that operating an internal combustion engine in low ambient temperatures, typical Canadian winter, fouls our oil quite a bit. The best thing in terms of the oil is for the engine to get hot and stay up at operating temperature and log all kinds of miles like you're on a highway trip. But that's typically not our winter operation. It stops and starts a lot of them in, in low temp. So that's what fouls the oil. So those two factors are our main things for calculating the, the remaining life of the oil. Just keep in mind though, that oil life monitors do not indicate how much physical oil is in the engine. So if you got a four liter crankcase capacity and you're down two liters of oil, Never mind how much it's telling you is remaining life expectancy of the oil. You need to add oil to that engine right now. So don't rely on this as your only input, but it's a very valuable one in terms of charting when you should, uh, should change your engine oil and filter. That's your motoring tip of the week.